So I'm really excited to talk about asteroids, but I'm also really excited to show you this new background that I have for my YouTube videos here in my new apartment in Salt Lake City. So check it out. I have some cool space paraphernalia in the background, very fitting, but I did want to talk today about asteroids. <laughs> As we know, asteroids have long been a staple in science fiction stories, but they will now be a main theme in real life deep space exploration missions. And we're seeing some of them unfold right in front of us. Clear. Asteroids and comets, what they're really like, we're starting to explore that. And also the question of if we hit them, will we smash them? One really amazing spacecraft that just launched is named Lucy, the first mission to the Trojan asteroid. And yes, Lucy is in the sky with a diamond. One of the instruments used to examine asteroids has a thin lab diamond as an optical component. So yes, in fact, NASA's Lucy spacecraft does have a diamond on board. And not only that, Lucy is actually called Lucy, named after the human fossil that we have learned so much about our own origins through studying. But enough with the references, what is Lucy doing that's so special and so incredible? These asteroids in the outer solar system hold clues to the ancient history of the solar system and of the Earth. The Lucy mission is going to investigate some of them. To get to that orbit, it first gets into a little orbit around the sun that comes back to Earth a year from now, and they do a gravity assist past Earth that pops about a little further. They do another gravity assist a year and a half, two years later that pops them out then fast enough to go to to the, to the orbit of Jupiter, but they're not going to Jupiter. It's going to be boosted into an orbit that eventually goes out to the orbit of Jupiter and back. Lucy is heading toward the main asteroid belt and then the Trojan asteroids in Jupiter's orbit. This $981 million mission is planned to fly this extremely complex trajectory over a dozen years. Lucy will swing by Earth three times for gravitational assists and it will visit a main belt asteroid and will subsequently fly by eight Trojan asteroids that share Jupiter's orbit around the sun. And Lucy launched a Saturday from Florida, but it did have a bit of a snafu. After the deployment of its two large solar arrays, one of them failed to latch on properly. And these solar panels that you see are critical. Mission scientists say Lucy will travel farther from the sun for a longer time than any previous solar powered spacecraft. Engineers are currently working on the problem and NASA is confident the mission will not be drastically impacted by this little snafu. Now the trick for Lucy is to send the Lucy probe out to the L4 point on an elliptical orbit that takes exactly six years to go around the sun. And then when it comes back in 2031, after visiting four different asteroids in the L4 Trojan point, It'll do another Earth flyby and that will send it into the L5 point. Jonathan described it perfectly when he told me that the Jupiter Sun Trojan points are the solar system's lint trap. I thought that was pretty clever. So we'll be able to see things that came from the outer solar system and ended up in the lint trap, things that we've never seen before. Jonathan says Lucy will whiz past and take some tourist photos and also gather some spectra so it's at least a 12 year mission. And, uh, and they're kind of, I get the impression from reading their papers that they think they'll probably, you know, keep going for another 10 years after that and go right. back to L4 and, you know. Another asteroid mission being planned for August of 2022 is called Psyche. The Psyche mission is a journey to a unique metal asteroid orbiting the sun between Mars and Jupiter. And what makes this asteroid Psyche unique is that it appears to be the exposed nickel iron core of an early planet, one of the building blocks of the solar system. There's another mission in the works called Psyche that's going to an asteroid called Psyche. You're gonna to have to change the mission name. And, uh, uh, and Psyche is an asteroid made of iron. Oh. We've never visited one of those before. Okay. And so there are all of these different asteroid missions on the books that are 
you know, the, the small body population of the solar system, asteroids and comets, are very diverse, we're mm. learning. And so we're, it's not enough just to have gone to one asteroid. We're, we're now starting to check out the various different weird small things in the solar system. And, uh, and so that's going to be a theme uh, for deep space exploration for the next decade. I mean, it's cool and all that we're going to study and learn more about these asteroids, but what about the real big question? When will we discover how to stop that impending doom asteroid from hitting Earth and killing us all? Well, SpaceX is trying to do that with NASA next month. I asked Jonathan about the double asteroid redirection test. The kind of object that DART is going to visit is an object that's about the size of the Washington Monument. And this is a SpaceX mission in conjunction with NASA, of course, and this will hopefully answer the question of if we hit an asteroid, can we successfully move it? And Jonathan explained to me why it's not so simple, because it really depends on the composition of the asteroid itself. Yeah, I think this is a really cool idea. Uh, so, so what's special about DART? Um, we're all, you know, worried about what, you know, we've seen the movies about the killer asteroid coming to, uh, um, to, to destroy us and, and, you know, Bruce Willis going off in the rocket and trying to, trying to stop it. Right. And so this is the first time we've actually tried to sort of, um, uh, test that out. Could we actually do that? Could we, could we save ourselves? Uh, and, uh, so back in, um, 2005, uh, NASA flew a mission called Deep Impact, mm -hmm. and that smashed into a comet to make a, a, it had a copper ball that it released and threw the copper ball at the comet to make an artificial crater. Wow. Uh, to understand what happens when you hit these bodies with something, you know, how much damage does it do? Uh, and the Japanese had a little, they, they fired a missile at, at an asteroid called uh, uh, Ryugu uh, in, um, uh, a couple years ago with their Hayabusa 2 probe to make a little artificial crater. Uh, and, but that was just like, how much damage can we do? It wasn't, can we actually make the thing move? And so this mission, DART, is... is uh, going to, I forget if it has a, a formula, but this asteroid Didymos, which is an asteroid that's relatively near the Earth. It's actually one of the uh, the asteroids that, you know, is in an orbit that potentially someday, thousands of years from now, could, could be a risk to us. And uh, Didymos has a little moon going around it, which we call Diddy Moon. Uh, it probably has a proper name now, but, but <laughs> you know, I think of it as Diddy Moon. And, and so, you know, Didymos itself is not a huge asteroid. It's not a real world, right? It's, a, it's only about a mile or so across. Oh, wow. And Diddy Moon is like a couple hundred yards across at most. Tiny. Uh, it's tiny. It's tiny. It's, it's, a, it's a mountain. It's a, uh, it's a small mountain maybe a hill but it's very easy to measure its orbital period very precisely mm -hmm. uh, and you can go like okay it went it went behind Didymos again and it went behind Didymos again you can use your stopwatch and get a very very accurate measurement of how long it takes to orbit and so if you change it by even a tiny bit you can spot that and so that's what makes this mission clever they found a target where even a very small change uh, is easy to measure. So they're going to slam into this moon and, and you know, shift it ever so slightly. And so that's going to end up with the moon in a slightly different orbit that just takes maybe, you know, uh, a fraction of a second or a second longer to go around uh, Didymos. But we're going to be able to measure that. And so we're going to confirm that, yes, indeed, um, by hitting this with the spacecraft, you can actually move it. And I mean, the question here is, right, is how squishy is Diddy Moon? After separation from the launch vehicle and over a year of cruise, it will intercept Diddy Mouse's moonlit in late September of 2022 next year. So the idea here is that the DART spacecraft will achieve kinetic impact deflection by deliberately crashing itself into the moonlit at a speed of about 6.6 kilometers per second with the aid of an onboard camera. 
Now this collision will change the speed of the moonlet in its orbit around the main body by a fraction of 1%, but this will change the orbital period of the moonlet by several minutes, enough to be observed and measured using telescopes from Earth. If it's a if you imagine Diddy Moon as like a soft pillow, mm -hmm. right? If you smash into it, it's just going to absorb the impact, and it's not going right. to, you know, not going to move overall. But but uh, um, if it's relatively rigid, then then it's going to move as much as you expect. And so so this is a way, if you like, to measure the squishiness of the asteroid. That what some asteroids, this is very are. Um, what we call rubble piles, which are basically like a ball pit in space. If you you know those ball pits where you fill the the, the thing with balls and you jump in it and it's you know you sink into it, right? Yeah. So if you imagine one of those just held together loosely by gravity, floating mm -hmm. in space, right? If you hit it with something, the thing is just going to go right through it. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to you know and out the other side, and 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 you know the, you're not going to change it. And and so uh, um, so so that's the question: is 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 it like that, or is it like a more rigid body where you actually get to uh, uh, to adjust its orbit? And so this is going to help us design save the Earth missions if we're if we ever see one of these things coming at us. Right, right. So that's that's the bottom line for DART. So why? Why is this work, you know, in, in the big picture so important, um, especially since, you know, that is one of the potential threats someday of, you know, that whole giant asteroid scenario? Like yeah, I mean, it's due diligence, right? It's, 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 well, we've talked for decades about, oh, maybe we could build a spacecraft that would divert the incoming asteroid and save us, right? Well, okay, let's, let's see, uh, you know, if we're going to design this spacecraft, we need to understand how to, you know, what we need to build it off, how, you know, how big a, a hit we need to give the asteroid to do what we need to do. And and so this is a start towards uh, getting the input numbers you need to make that design, right? Uh, uh, you, If you're going to hit something and move it, you need to know what the something's made of. Right, right. Which is a little bit boys with toys, you know, oh, here's a new interesting scientific thing. I wonder if I can break it. But, you know, it does have some justification with this worry about uh, right. being uh, uh, about impacts on Earth. So we're not only seeing more billionaires and celebrities going to space, we're also getting really excited because we're going to be learning a lot more about asteroids in the coming years and hopefully get some clues and answers to our own origins here on Earth. Pretty exciting stuff to look forward to. So I just thought that I would give you guys sort of a little summary of some stuff that we can expect to see. And also I wanted to hear from you what you are most excited about is it going to the Trojan points? Is it the DART mission and potentially saving ourselves from an asteroid hurling itself toward Earth later down the line? What excites you? And is there anything else that you guys wanted to talk about with this topic? I love reading your comments. Again, I'm really excited because I made this super cool, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna show you it. Stand by, stand by. That's what we like to say in the news biz, stand by. Um, so as you can see, I have some cool here. I got this lovely postcard of the Chandra X-ray Observatory from Jonathan McDowell. Another one here. I donated and Inspiration4 sent me this cool, I don't know if it's supposed to be like a like a uh, coaster for your drink. It has like Velcro on it. Anyway, it works here. Um, this is something from me winning a Tri-Cities Dancing with the Stars competition. Oh, I went to college. Congratulations. <laughs> and this is a uh, story Musgraves. So this is pretty cool. Um, I think I was about eight years old. I had just been on a carnival cruise. I had cornrows in my hair and I got to go up on stage and meet this fine astronaut and, hey, and get his signature. So that was pretty cool. So we are doing well here. Um, this is 
you know, not supposed to be a tour of my apartment, but that's what it's turning into. I'll see you guys soon. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Pinocchio.